So over the last couple tutorials on the Universal Audio Kit here, we have covered using the SPL Transient Designer to add attack and, and crack to our kick and our snare. We've used the Universal Audio 1176 compressor, absolutely spanking down the audio using that all buttons in mode and running in parallel New York style to add a bunch of punch and weight to our beats. And then we've dialed in some ambience and some space around our hits using the EMT 250 digital reverb. So we've got our percussion sounding uh, pretty sweet and now it's time to get everything grungy. And to do that, we're going to use one of my favorite plugins that Universal Audio has made, which is the Empirical Labs EL7 Fatso, which is a tape compression distortion style uh, system. And I really have to show it to you guys to really explain what it does. So I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to put it on the entire drum rack bus. So I know a lot of people are really fascinated with getting an analog sound and a lot of what that analog sound entails is sounding like tape. When, when recordings were made onto tape, tape had these characteristics to it that digital audio doesn't have. Uh, now, I, I'm a total novice when it comes to tape. I've never recorded on tape in my life. Um, so I'm just regurgitating knowledge that I've heard from some mix engineers that, that used to do this. Um, but the main characteristics of tape that I've heard that are valuable are, one is you can saturate it. So it, it almost adds a little bit of compression um, to your sound just by the pure fact that you're running it onto tape. The other thing that it has is a warmth to it where if you hit tape really hard in the high end, the it'll actually attenuate the high frequencies, resulting in a, a warmer, slightly darker kind of sound versus digital, which is... Um, retains everything in its total purity, which can sometimes result in a bit of a brighter, harsher sound in the top end. So a lot of people like that analog warm sound that tape had to it. And this is the plugin to do it. So let's get started with the Fatso. So first of all, you'll see with the Fatso is it's got two channels. It's got a left and a right. And in this case, I have them linked. So if I move one of the controls on the left, it's going to move it on the right, which is the way I want it set up as a as a stereo effect. The very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some warmth. So we've got this warmth parameter right here. And all I do is I click the button and you'll actually see this, um, these set of LEDs go up. So I'm going to dial in um, midway on the warmth as the very first parameter. Now, what the warmth does is it mimics high frequency tape saturation using kind of, a, kind of like a high frequency limiter. The harder you hit it, the more warmth you get by reducing the high frequencies. And it also interacts with the compressor settings of the Fatso, so that's why I'm dialing in the warmth first. So if we bypass this, I'm gonna let you hear the drums soloed, and then I'll add it in so you can hear the difference that the warmth is having. So you can hear it most prominently on the top end of the snare and on the hi-hats. You can hear it um, attenuating those frequencies a little bit. Now, the very next section we're going to go to is the input control on the Fatso. And the input control right here controls how much kind of saturation and distortion we're getting. And the the beautiful part about this plugin is it adds a very musical type of harmonic distortion. It adds in second and third order harmonics, which interact with the uh, the original fundamental in a way that's very, very pleasing to the ear. Now, similar to how I'd showed you guys with the 1176 compressor, the higher you turn up this input knob, the more harmonics and saturation that we get. And uh, I'm just going to dial it into taste just by listening to the signal here and playing with the parameter. So when I turn it all the way up, we're getting a lot of warmth, a lot of saturation, and a lot of those harmonics coming into the signal. So I'm going to dial it back and uh, just add in a little bit of this. And you can see the meter along the top is controlling, um, it's displaying how much warmth that we're getting in the signal. 
whereas the meter on the bottom is showing us how much compression that we're getting. Now, the compressor is the next section that we're going to get into because uh, the compressor is actually quite interesting on this one. We have four different modes on the compressor, which we can tell which mode it's in by looking at the LEDs here. So if I click the compressor button, you can see we can move between the different modes. Now, the first mode is the bus compressor, lit up with green. And the bus compressor is a very, very mild compressor. It's a two to one ratio. It's got um, very slow release characteristics. It's got um, very mild knee to it, and it's intended for program material. Um, in this case, I'm not going to use the bus compressor because I'm using it on drums. The very next one down is a general purpose compressor. Next one down after that is the tracking compressor. And the tracking compressor, in this case, uh, they say it's very similar to the 1176 compressor, which is a favorite of mine. I love that one. Um, so if we click it one more time, we go down to the bottom mode, which is spank. And spank is, um, as the name would suggest, a very aggressive type of compression, almost limiting, actually, in this case. And the spank, they say, mimics the uh, SSL talkback compressor and it adds a very aggressive sounding type of effect. Now, there's a, another really sweet little piece to this compressor, and that's we can actually put it into hybrid modes. So if I continue clicking this button, I can actually add in a hybrid between the bus compressor and the spank. If I click it again, I'm going between general purpose and the spank. If I click it again, I'm going as a hybrid between the tracking compressor and the spank. So in this case, um, I'm going to go with uh, this mode right here, which is going to hybrid between the, the 1176 style tracking compressor and the spank compressor. And then um, I'm going to be taking a look at how much compression that I'm getting here and controlling and adjusting that using my input signal. So that's right about where I want it. The last piece of the FATSO that we're going to cover with respect to our percussion here is the transformer. So it's this button right here, and it lights up an LED called tranny. Um, in this case, tranny is short for transformer. And what this does is it adds in low-frequency harmonics. So by low-frequency, they mean anything under about 150 hertz. And what it's going to do is it's going to add in to your low signal higher-frequency harmonics, which is going to trick your ears um, using principles that are called psychoacoustics. Um, psychoacoustics are used, um, if any of you are familiar with some of the Waves plugins like R-Bass and Max-Bass, it uses psychoacoustics by injecting some higher up harmonics to fool your ear into thinking that a lower frequency fundamental is actually present. And in this case, it's really valuable for us on the low end of our mix if we're listening to anything on smaller speakers, it'll help your mix to translate way better. So by activating the tranny section to the fatso and injecting some higher frequency harmonics, it's going to make the lower end of our drums punch through better and be more apparent on small speakers and also to use those psychoacoustic principles to make the low end seem more prominent than it is, even at the same actual amplitude levels. So we've got things dialed in there. Now, this is another, similar to how we use the 1176 in parallel mode, I actually like to do that with this as well because I like, I find with this, with this type of effect, uh, my ears tend to, tend to want to have the original punch of the sounds, but also with the warmth of the saturated signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into an audio effect rack by pressing Command and G on my Mac here. That's Control G on the PC. And you can see what I've got here is the effect put into an audio effect rack. Now, if I hit the chain area, you'll see I have the ability to mix it in using the chain selector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another chain, which is our bypass chain. So this is just a dry signal. And this is our fatso. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the crossfade section here. I'm going to fade this so that I can mix it in with the original dry signal. And because this is going to make things louder, I'm just going to gain stage these down by a few decibels each. Now, 
because I'm using this Fatso plugin in parallel now, it means that I can dial in the settings to be a little bit more aggressive. So whereas before um, I had the warmth at five, I'm going to bump up the warmth a little bit. I'm going to leave tranny on and then I'm going to bump up the input signal a little bit, which is going to add in aggressive amounts of distortion. Now, it has another display parameter here that you can see, which is zero VU and pinned. And when the pinned light lights up, it's showing us how much um, actual distortion is happening. So if we add in um, and the pinned light is lighting up, you're hitting it really hard. You're getting um, quite a bit of total harmonic distortion on here. So if we leave this completely down to the left with our chain selector, we're not going to be getting any of the fatso. And then as I move and mix it up, we'll be able to hear the fatso come in. So let's check this out. So there we've got our mix control set up. Now, I'm not going to make my final judgment on where I want this to be without listening to our beats in context, because we have them on solo right now. Solo doesn't do us a lot of good, because in reality, we're going to be listening to the drums in the mix. So I'm going to deactivate the solo here and readjust my parameters based on how the drums are sounding actually in the mix. So there you have it. That's the Fatso, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this one that I used here is the Fatso Junior. There's also a Fatso Senior. Now, the difference between the two is the Fatso Junior is true to the original hardware unit. The Fatso Senior was designed in software form only, and they added in some additional parameters that can be used to control compression settings. So it wasn't a piece of the original, but it's been they've been nice enough to add in some extra things so we can do stuff in the digital realm that are impossible in the analog realm with the original unit. So the Fatso, um, I mean, I would use this thing on on so many different types of things in my in my mix. I would use this on the brass in this track. I would use this on the bass. Um, I'm pretty addicted to this. Um, the name initially caught my attention just because, wow, who doesn't want their stuff to sound fat? But now that I actually got into this plugin and I understand it and I've been using it, oh my God, this thing just blows my mind. It adds that beautiful, analog, crunchy, saturated, grungy sound without me having to use any hardware. It's just beautiful. And, uh, you know, as an alternative, uh, in the past, I'd been using PSP Vintage Warmer, but uh, it just doesn't hold a candle to the way this plugin sounds. Um, this, this really has the legit analog sound to it that um, these old school uh, tape recordings um, and highly saturated recordings had. So there it is, folks, the, the walkthrough of the Fatso Junior. Hope you enjoy it and uh, talk to you real soon.